continue our series tonight on Back to Basics. So I'm going to give you the series text. And I'm going to give you the sermon text tonight. It should be uh, coming up very soon. The series text is Hebrews 6, 1 to 3. But our sermon text we're going to look at tonight is Acts chapter 18, verse 24 to verse 28. Acts 18, 24 to 28. Going back to basics. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So uh, the series, Acts 6, sorry, Hebrews 6, 1 to 3. The sermon tonight is Acts 18, 24 to 28. There's a man who wanted to join the church. And believe it or not, this church has a membership, which we are going to be rolling out properly for 2021. But this church has a membership. Uh, but this man wants to join this church. He wants to be part of, of the church's membership. And he sits before a panel and he's asked the, about the Bible. They, they ask him, what part of the Bible do you like the best? He says, I like the New Testament the best. And they ask him, what book uh, do you, is your favorite book in the Bible? He says, my favorite book in the Bible is the book of parables. So they asked him to relate one of the parables to this membership, this church committee membership. So he began. He says, once upon a time, a man went down from Jericho, Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves. And the thorns grew up and choked the man. And he went and met the queen of Sheba. And she gave that man, she gave that man, sir, a thousand talents of silver and a hundred ch changes of garments. And he got in his chariot and drove furiously. And as he was driving along under a big tree, his hair got caught in a limb and left him hanging there. And he hung there many days and many nights. The ravens brought him food to eat and water to drink. And one night, while he was hanging there asleep, his wife Delilah came along and cut off his hair. And he fell among stony ground. And it began to rain and rain 40 days and 40 nights. And he hid himself in a cave. Later, he went on and met a man who said, come in and take supper with me. But he said, I cannot come in for I have, I have married a wife. And the man went out into the highways and hedges and compelled him to come in. He then came uh, 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 to Jerusalem and saw Queen Jezebel sitting high and lifted up in a window of the wall. When she saw him, she laughed and said, throw her down out of there. And they threw her down. Then he said, throw her down again. And they threw her down 70 times seven. And the fragments which they picked up <laughs> filled 12 baskets full. Now whose wife will she be in the day of judgment? The church committee decided this man is a very knowledgeable candidate and they allowed him to join the church. Tonight, I want to preach a sermon I've simply called a man of the word. And I want God to speak to us tonight about the word of God. I mean, we looked at last Wednesday, the importance of coming to the house of God. Well, tonight we want to look at the importance of being a man. And also, when I throw out very importantly, a woman of the word. Let's read, amen, tonight. First of all, our uh, series text, uh, Hebrews 6, 1 to 3. Therefore... Leaving the discussions of elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God, of the doctrine of baptism, of laying on of hands, of the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. And let's jump to our text tonight, our main text in Acts chapter 18, 24. To 28. Now a certain man named Apollos, born at Alexandra, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man had been instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things of the Lord, though he knew only the baptism, though he knew only the baptism of John. So he began to speak boldly in the synagogues. When Aquila and Priscilla heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. And when he desired to cross to uh, uh, Archia, the brethren wrote exhorting the disciples to receive him. And when he arrived, he greatly helped those who had believed 
Peter uh, through grace, uh, for he vigorously refuted the Jews publicly, showing from the scriptures that Jesus is the Christ. Father, tonight we are so grateful again for this opportunity uh, to gather us as your church. I'm asking, speak to us tonight. Uh, Father, deal with us. Help us, God, to be men and women of your word. I pray tonight for anyone who's lost, uh, who's backslidden, who's present, who's listening. Father, send the power of your word to their hearts. I pray, cut them to conviction. Uh, Father, unto repentance. Father, we give you the glory and the praise. Uh, have your way and be glorified tonight. Um, in the wonderful name of your son, Jesus Christ. Christ uh, and all God's people said uh, amen uh, and uh, amen. I want to look first of all tonight very quickly or go to uh, tonight. So I say we want to have a little crash course of the Bible, a crash course, go for the Bible as quickly as possible. Now tonight, I believe every single one of us will agree the Bible is unique. It is unique both in unity and diversity. What I mean by that tonight, amen, you're going to see unity out of diversity in the word of God. It is a harmonious book tonight that continues, amen, from the beginning to the end, from Genesis to the Revelations. And the main theme of the Bible is the worker, amen, and the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And from Genesis to Revelation, you see what is called a a scarlet thread of redemption running through, uh, throughout the word of God. But I want you tonight to consider the incredible diversity that has produced uh, such unity. Number one, I want you to consider the diversity of authors. There, are, there were more than 40 authors um, who wrote the Bible, including kings uh, and herdsmen uh, and fishermen and tax collectors uh, wrote the word of God. In the Bible, the, the, the Bible tonight uh, was written by both educated uh, and uneducated, uh, uneducated men. It was written by both rich and by and, and by the poor. And the Bible is written in three languages, I believe. It is Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek tonight. Three languages in three, on three continents under all types of difficult and, 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 and challenging conditions. Also consider the time span. The Bible is written over a time span of 1,500 to 1,800 years. And the Bible has shaped literally the course of history, thought, and cultures in ways unmatched by any other book. It has influenced philosophy, morality, law, politics, arts, music, literature, education, the religions of the world. Every single one of them has been influenced, greatly influenced by the Bible. So look at the quality of Apollos tonight. Now before we look at our text tonight, let me say this. We have a problem on our hands as Christians a massive problem and i guess the best way to really explain this problem is the, the story goes of a uh, young man who went uh, uh, to university he goes there to uh, start his degree and while he's there he begins to fall upon hard times he would write back to his parents and say, listen mom and dad uh, could you send me some money i'm just finding it a bit a bit rough and, and they would simply tell him son why don't you read your bible and they'll tell him the verses and the chapters to read and you know he's like i'll read my bible and he writes back listen i i really really need some money and they'll write back say listen read your bible read this chapter read this verses listen i'm reading the bible i'm reading the chapters and the verses you're telling me can you just send me some money and they don't send him any money and he writes back again and he gets back the same reply well after the first year he goes back he's discouraged he thinks you know he's done well he hasn't done well um, he's going to fail all because mom and dad didn't send him any money so he begins to have a conversation with them um, and he's basically angry he's venting his anger listen uh, i'm struggling because you didn't send me any money um, here i am i'm just trying to get my degree um, i can't even get past my first year because you wouldn't send me any money um, and they simply said to his sons uh, son listen to me you are, you are not reading your bible now we know you're not reading your bible because in the chapter in the verses we told you to read, we put in there $20, $50 bills in those chapters, in those verses. You know, the problem we have today is Christians are not reading their Bible. They're not giving themselves to the word of God. And the problem is we want a quick and easy way. We want to be able to just listen. We want to uh, hear tapes. We want somebody to tell us all about it. Uh, and that's okay. And that's good. But the reality is tonight, uh, amen, nothing will ever substitute you knowing the Bible, amen, by you not reading it yourself. 
It is important you read it and you pick it up uh, and you be become uh, familiarized with the word of God yourself. Uh, we like to make all the excuses why we can't read the Bible. We say, well, we're too busy. We say, well, you don't understand my work schedule. I'm working too much. We give all the excuses why we can't uh, read the word of God. Some people even try to say, well, the Bible contradicts himself. Uh, let me say something tonight. The reason people reject the Bible and they say the Bible contradicts themselves itself, the Bible doesn't contradict itself. The Bible contradicts them. They don't like what it says. They don't like the fact that it challenges and exposes their lifestyle and the decisions and the choices that they're making. In church tonight, we can give all the excuses we want to give tonight. But tonight, if the truth be told, the real reason why the people of God do not read the Bible is because we're lazy. I'll say for you, amen. We simply can't be bothered. We don't value the old term, the good book tonight. We don't value, amen, the fact that lives uh, has been laid down so you and I can have, um, amen, God's word to us. Tonight, God's people are reading their Bible. And not only does God the Father know this tonight, but the people around us, they know it as well. And the sad thing with all of this tonight uh, is even with my opening story tonight, uh, many people didn't even know some of the stories I was talking about. They were laughing, <laughs> and the reason you were laughing, because <laughs> you didn't want to seem out of place. So the word of God tonight has certain st sad statements and warning. The first one is found in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. And this all has to do with us regarding our neglect of reading this book. Hosea 4 6 says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That you're not destroyed because of an army come. You're not destroyed because somebody's put some poison in your food. No, you are being destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. Hebrews 13, verse 8 to verse 9. Many of us know verse 8 very well. It simply says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We know that. But he goes on to say this. Do not be carried about with very strange doctrines. That even though we know Christ does not change tonight, the writer of the Hebrews begins to warn us, amen, about being led astray by strange and weird doctrine. That we see in Luke chapter 21, verse 8, the Bible tells us these words. These are the words of the Lord Jesus himself. He says, take heed that you be not deceived. Now, how could you and I avoid this tonight? How is it possible tonight that you and I, amen, are being destroyed because of a lack of knowledge? How is it possible that you and I, amen, are being carried away by strange and, 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 and various doctrines? Amen, how is it possible that you and I, amen, are not going to be deceived? How, how, how does this happen tonight? I'll let you know how it happens tonight. By neglecting to know the word of God. Listen to me tonight. The Bible is God's letter to you. It is God's love letter to you. When I was courting my wife and I sat down and I had counsel with my pastor, he shared two things with us regarding courting. He says, number one, talk on the phone a lot. That's good preaching right there. It's good doctrine. Talk on the phone a lot. You need to get to know each other. You know, in, you know, in, in the world, you don't, you don't, you're not even talking on the phone. You're just jumping straight to madness. You know, you begin to build, you, you, you build relationships, get to know each other. The second thing he said is this, write letters to each other. Some of you never heard that before. I'm blessing you right now. He said, write letters to each other. So when Michelle would write letters to me, as you should, when she wrote, write, 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 wrote letters to me, I would read these letters. No matter how long the letter was, I would take my time and I would give myself to read the letters that my wife now was writing to me. You know, we can be put off by the size of the Bible tonight. It really is a big book tonight, but we need to see it for what it is. It is a big book with a lot of love. It is God's love letter to every single person in this building, but also every single person outside of this building tonight. Now, I've read this book over and over and over again. And I believe tonight your Bible should not be clean, except you, you can go preaching Bible. I've got several Bibles at home. Your Bible should not be clean. Your Bible that you read should be beat up. Your Bible you read, amen, should have highlights and markings on it tonight. Your Bible you read tonight, amen, should be completely mashed up in all the good sense. In our text tonight, 
we, we meet a man, he's called Apollos. We did in verse 24. And verse 24, when you read it tonight, it gives us insight into this man's life. And, and because of his life tonight, listen to me, it didn't take him very long for this man to make an impression because this man is put in the same stead as Paul and Peter. I mean, these are the big guns of the Bible. He's seen or is put in the same category as these great men. He's respected by many people. And when I began to look at Apollos, why was Apollos, even though he has such a short uh, appearance, you can say in the word of God, why did this man make such a massive, Massive impact. Why was he respected by many? The reason being tonight is going to give us the reason why or how we should approach this book. Number one tonight, Apollos is a child of God. Apollos is a child of God. One of the things I hear from people is that I've read the Bible and it makes no sense. Can I hope you tonight? The reason tonight it makes no sense is because you're not a child of God. Before I got saved, I would read the Bible and it would give me a headache. I would read the Bible and it made absolutely no sense at all. But the moment I got saved tonight, it became a different book. Do you know why? Because I was a different man. I'd given my life to the one who wrote this book. In verse 24, the Bible says, Apollos was a Jew tonight. Amen. He is a child of God. And tonight, if you're going to understand the book, you must be a child of God. Number two tonight, he's an eloquent man. Have you ever met people tonight who could talk, but they didn't know what they were talking about? Have you met other people tonight who knew what they were talking about, but they couldn't really relay the message across? Well, Apollos knew what he was talking about, and Apollos knew how to get it across. Listen to me, this is something tonight that comes from knowing God. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15 says this, And from childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Jesus Christ. This is speaking about Timothy. Paul is writing to this man and he's saying from young, you have known the scriptures. From young, amen, this has been imparted to you. And he says because of what you know and what you know tonight, it is able to make you wise. We see in Acts chapter 4, verse 13. Now when they had come, sorry, when they uh, uh, saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. Tonight, this only comes tonight when you've been with Jesus. Can I ask a question? Have you been with Jesus? Number three, he's a student of the word of God. We've heard the saying, a man of his word. But tonight, amen, what we need is men of the word. I appreciate you being a man of your word. But we need men of the word tonight. The Bible calls this man an eloquent man. And I love this tonight. The Bible says he's not just an eloquent man. He's mighty in scripture. What a statement tonight. That he's not just an eloquent man, he's mighty in scripture tonight. This is a powerful, powerful statement. Because the word mighty there is where you get the word dunamis. It's where we get our English word dynamite. So, amen. If, listen, if Apollos was American, they'll say this man is the bomb with scripture. He's the bomb with the Bible. This man, listen to me, he's able to blow things up in a good sense tonight. And tonight, listen to me, God wants us to be like Apollos. Now, why should you and I be mighty in Scripture? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm going to help you tonight. Number one, we need to be mighty in Scripture tonight because it is the most important book anyone can read. How many people believe tonight this is the Word of God? Only two people. Maybe I need to preach to them. How many people believe tonight? Tottenham, do we believe this is the Word of God? Okay, do we believe this is the most important book anyone can read? Okay. How many of you have read it? Wait, wait, wait. All of it. Thank you, Trisha. Anybody else? Prof. Moore, Michelle, Barbara. Anyone? Charlie, Hibbs, Mr. Mensah, Anna. All of it. Jason's not too sure. 
Anybody else? Carl. Anybody? All of it. Mina. Now listen to me tonight. Something's wrong. Because we just said this is the most important book anyone can read. I'm going to ask one more question and I want you to think about it. Think about it very carefully. How many of you are going to read it? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Let's go very quiet again, Lord. Keep preaching, sir. I will, Father. Listen to me, the devil doesn't want you to read it. It's not just the most important book you can read. But understand this, the devil doesn't want you to read it. Listen to me, church. This is a spiritual book. It's amazing when it's time to read the Bible. Something always shows up to be, seem to be more important than reading the Bible. It's amazing when it's time to read the Bible. You actually pick up the Bible to read it. You fall asleep. <laughs> because this is a spiritual book. And hell does not want you to read it because the devil knows the power of this book. One, somebody asked me a question the other day during our last Bible study about uh, being enthusiastic. Here's that word again. By reading the word about what if you're not, etc. Does that mean you're not? And I'm going to try and answer that tonight with uh, actually something I found. I want you to listen to what this is. Listen to, what, what, listen to this. It says, it is a common temptation of Satan to make us give up reading, sorry, make us give up the reading of the word of God and prayer, listen to this, when our enjoyment is gone. As if it were of no use to read the scriptures when we no longer enjoy them, as if it's no use to pray when the spirit of, when we have no spirit of prayer. The truth is that in order to enjoy the word, we ought to continue to read it. And the way to obtain a spirit of prayer is continue praying. The less we read the word of God, the less we desire to read it. And the less we pray, the less we desire to pray. I hope that's going to help somebody with being enthusiastic tonight. See, tonight, I've realized something. Anything the devil would try to stop me from doing, that's what I need to do. So when I don't feel like coming to church, and believe it or not, I have those times, I come. Because I'm not going to give that stinking, nasty, what he wants. And it's sad tonight that people will stay at home. It's sad tonight that people will not read their Bible because the devil is winning. He's convinced them because I don't feel like it. That means I shouldn't. I need to feel it then. When I feel it, I can't stand that word. Trust me. I need, when I feel it, then I'll do it. It's the most important book anyone can read. The devil doesn't want us to read it. Why do we need to read it? Because we don't know it. I want to ask a question tonight. And I'm wondering how to do this. Why not? We've got a little bit of time. I wanted to, I want you to vote with your hands. Simply true, false. If it's true, lift your hand up. If it's false, keep your hand down. If you don't put your hand up for anything, I'm coming to you. So here we go. People, are you ready? Okay, sorry. Flesh, forgive me, Lord. All right, here we go. Which of these following I'm going to read, which of these are not in the Bible? Are not in the Bible. It's not there. So if it's there, lift your hand up. If it's not there, keep your hand down. Right? Are not in the Bible. If it's there, it is. If it's not, Keep it down. Do we all get that? Here we go. Everyone's getting nervous now. Good. Here it is. Up, yes. Down, it's not there. It's there, it's not there. Number one, cleansiness is next to godliness. If it's there, lift your hand up. If it's not, if it's not keep it down. 
She said, what's that? What's that? I know, I don't know what that is, you know. What, what is that? What is that? What is that? Just, if you're up or down, you're doing this, like styling out. All right. All right. This, so all you say is not there. Okay, next one. God helps those who help themselves. If it's there, you know. Anybody? Yeah. Jamal is doing now. Trisha, what are you doing now? This is do, do, you got Jamal doing this now. It's like, which one is it? Jamal, man. Come on, man. It's either that or that. All right. Confession is good for the soul. Carl, stop it. Who is that? Anna? Is that okay? Oh, it's there. All right. Anybody else? Confession is good for the soul. Anybody else? Carl, you sure? Okay. Let's continue. We are as prone to sin as sparks fly upward. We are as prone to sin as sparks fly upward. Okay. Next one. Money is the root of all evil. Okay. Idris, Anna, anybody else? Carl, uh, Mala, Charlie. Uh, who's that? Jonathan. Who else? Who else? Back in there, uh, Solomon, uh, Ibs. This Blossom, do you have your hands up? Not Blossom. Anybody else? What, what is this? Is this, you know, Nazi Germany is gone, you know? It's like, it's like, it's a salute. It's a salute. <laughs> All right. Uh, you're halfway. There's no halfway here, Trisha. You're either up or you're down. Which one is it? Down. All right. Anybody else? Okay. One more. One more. Honesty is the best policy. Why is it both of you? That is, that is doing that. Talk to your son, you know. It's like, what's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? Honesty is the best policy. Okay, here we go. None of them were there. None of those who I've read are in the Bible. It's the love of money. Well done, Charlie. Even though you put your hand up for money, Charlie, you understand now. Not there. <laughs> it's not there. Read your Bible, Pastor. I mean, read this. Maybe we'll keep you in for six more months before we we'll release you. <laughs> listen, all laughs aside, listen, I remember when I got saved and I started reading my Bible and I started reading about what Jesus said and what Jesus didn't say. And so I've been thinking about, did he say that? What? I can't believe it. I'm shocked. I didn't know that. And the reality is I was one of those guys that even though I had not read the Bible, I thought I knew the Bible. And when I got saved, I actually started reading the Bible and I found out what Jesus said and what Jesus didn't say. It just completely blew my mind. And I'm going to say it again, church. We need to read this because, listen to me, we don't know this. And if we don't read this, you know what we're saying tonight? If we don't read this tonight, amen, we don't know God. Let's close. Know your word. A man called Felix Brooks said these words. So the Bible is like a telescope. If a man looks through his telescopes, he sees worlds beyond. But if he simply looks at his telescope, all he sees is a telescope. He says the Bible is a thing to be looked through, which will bring you into beyond. But if a man just looks at the Bible, all he sees is the dead letter. So that I want to challenge every single one of us tonight. I want to help us to read this book, whether it be hard copy, whether it be on your on your on your your technological device, your phone, your pad, where it is. I want to challenge you to read this book. It is so vital, more now than ever before. Number one, if we're going to read this book, ask God. Ask God tonight to help you read this book. The Bible who tells us tonight, Apollos tonight was a man of great intensity. In fact, verse 25 says he was fervent 
in spirit. This, this is indicating the power of the Holy Spirit tonight. Listen, you need to ask God to give you a passion for this book. Now, if we pray tonight, I believe part of our prayer life is God, give me a passion for your word. Continually, God, give me a desire. Help me to desire as the day panters for the water. So my soul longs out. P pray that tonight. God, give me a desire for this book. Because listen to me, it is a spiritual book. And because it is a spiritual book, you need the help of the Holy Spirit tonight. If you're going to read this book. Number two tonight, get to know. What do I mean by that tonight? Apollos had been instructed tonight in the scriptures. Another was tonight, he wanted to know. And what I'm saying tonight is this, familiarize yourself with what's in it. Familiarize yourself with what Jesus said. Familiarize yourself with the accounts and the stories in the Bible. I usually tell people to start from the New Testament, then go to the Old. Start with the Gospels all the way to Revelations. Then start to go to Genesis all the way to Malachi. And just familiarize yourself with the Bible. Just read it as a book amen, of stories because it is a book of historical accounts and historical stories. And just, just read it. It doesn't matter whether you're taking much in or not. Then the next time you slow down, you take you just begin to take your uh, slow down your pace and just just begin to just uh, uh, take your time and get to know uh, the word of God again. Listen to me. I've read the Bible now. Probably this is probably my ninth time I'm reading it. I'm reading different translations now. And each time I read it, even up to this morning, I'm seeing stuff I didn't see before. It's blowing my mind. I mean, how is that possible? I, I didn't see that before. Because it's God's book tonight. Number three, ask questions. In Acts chapter 8, verse 30, Philip means, meets an Ethiopian eunuch. And he asks him this question, do you understand? It's not enough tonight to read something tonight and just do it. You must determine, first of all, what it means. Otherwise, the application you give to it can be completely wrong. This is why people take scripture and take it completely out of context. And the moment you take a text out of context, it becomes a pretext tonight. Find out what it means. Ask those questions tonight. And I'm sure tonight that Apollos, when he spoke to Aquila and Priscilla, I'm sure tonight this man had questions for this godly couple. I'm sure tonight he would sit down all night, have fellowships, and they would just uh, talk about the things of God, and he would begin to throw questions. But what about this? Uh, and what about that? Uh, and I want to give you five questions you need to ask when you read the word of God tonight. What? Who? When? Where? How? That when you read the word of God, what is going on? Who has been spoken to? When did this happen? Where? Why is this happening? How? I mean, ask those questions. Locate yourself in the scripture. Put yourself there. And ask the question that needs to be asked. And whenever you get a passage tonight that you're not very clear on, ask your pastor. And I'll say to this, some do. They, 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 they always text me in the most times when I'm intensely doing something, especially writing a sermon. But you know what? I appreciate, I, with all my heart, I really appreciate them doing this because I'd rather them ask me than go off and get some weird doctrine. So again, for those who are, who you know who you are, you know you ain't. You text me, Papa, Pastor, can you tell me what this, keep doing it. I need the challenge, so do it. For those who don't, that's why I give you a blessing right there. Listen, I still ask my pastor questions. Ask him, Pastor. What is it? Pastor, I, I don't see this. What, where is this from? What, what are you, you know, I ask him. Right. Number four, apply truth. In verse 25, Christianity is described as the way of the Lord. Before they started calling us Christians, they would call us the way. And it is a title tonight that has followed the people of God from the very, from the very conception tonight that we are people of the way tonight. This is Christianity tonight. Doesn't just mean that, you know what, we believe certain things tonight. It means that we practice the things that we believe. People believe a lot of stuff, but do they practice it? We don't just believe this. We practice it. We put it into works tonight. 
And the main question to ask is how does the truths and the principles that are contained in the word of God apply to me? How are they somehow affecting my attitudes and my actions? Are they affecting my attitudes and my actions tonight in the right direction? Lastly, tonight, we must consider the big picture. Finally, with the knowledge of what you know, you can now help others. Verse 27. The Bible says that, um, and when he desired to cross to Archaea, the brethren wrote the exalted disciples to receive him. And when he arrived, he greatly helped those who had believed through grace. That once you begin to get to know this book, you are now in a position to help others. And there is no greater way tonight than help others to help them know Jesus Christ. To help them know about his death, his burial, his resurrection. To help them know about what he said and what... They, to help them know that the Bible does not say cleansiness is next to godliness. You'd be surprised how many people believe that nonsense. See tonight, you may know medicine tonight. But do you know the great physician? You may, you may know your husband, you may know your wife, but do you know tonight the lover of your soul? The husband. You, you, may, you, you, may, know, you may know your favorite uh, 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 program or whatever it is tonight, amen, but do you know what are contained in this book? Because it's amazing, we've got time for everything else. We, 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 can, we can finish a book. We, we, we can finish a program. We can finish a love letter. We can finish a game on our phones, but we'll never finish this book. Tonight, let God's spirit deal with us about being men and women of the world. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes.